little doe. <laughs> Where you going, little doe? Where them perch at? That's what I'm looking for. I'm about to go crab fishing though. There he is, dude. He's right in front of the boot. <laughs> That's awesome. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is Steven Turner with Turner Fishing. So, if you're down south, or pretty much anywhere in the U.S., you're either getting snowed in, or as you can hear in the in the shop, getting a lot of rain. So, my part of the lake, the river, has been getting a little bit muddy. Now, come next week, it's going to be real muddy. So, I went out a couple days ago, got my limit, but I met a, a bunch of you guys out there while I was out there. You know, shout out to all y'all that I talked to on the water that day. And... Like a couple of you had like maybe three or four fish. A bunch of you had no fish. And I just wanted to go over, you know, why I was able to find and catch them versus a lot of other people wouldn't be. Number one thing was my electronics. Now you may say, well, Stephen, you got live scope or something? No, I don't got live scope. Wish I did. That would make it a lot easier, but. I have a hundred dollar depth finder in the front and it found a hundred percent of my fish when I went. It's a Piranha Max, not even a down image, just a 2D version. But you got to trust in your electronics. If I'd go somewhere and I didn't see nothing on it, I'd leave. Now as you see in the video, uh, I showed you the electronics and what they look like on there. I mean I used a fish ID, all that crap that you're not supposed to use, but I do. <laughs> but the thing about it is, when the water's stingy, the water's muddy. This is what these crappie are going to do. All right. When the water's dingy, the water's muddy, they're going to suspend away from any structure for the most part. Or they may be right in the structure. You got to figure out what they're doing. Muddy water, they, can only, they can't rely on their eyeballs. They got to rely on their senses. So what does that say? I made a video in the past about what color stands out more in dirty water. And we ended up with our crappy man green, uh, black, and a baby blue color, I believe, did pretty good. So, number one factor, you got to have a good color for dirty water. You can't go out there throwing our clear water baits like green ice and bluegrass and all that stuff. So, so get you a black jig, uh, a crappy man green jig. Uh, a, a baby blue which I don't even think we have that on the line anymore to create a muddy water line of baits just for this upcoming spring because normally down here on Murray it gets really muddy so I've got one color ready to roll I gotta go test it out I'm, I test out all colors guys honestly I'm gonna like I got two colors I want to make and I got one already made up I'm gonna go test out as soon as this rain gets done doing it's doing and I got another color I'm, I'm creating as I'm making this video so look out for those but in today's video we caught most of them on the little stinker i don't even know i should have a bag of them here somewhere yeah let's see on the little stinker and the crappy man green we've got these on bulk right now on the website uh we got the little minnow in bulk too so you can order you know 25 50 100 or 30 60 100 for the little stinker but the number one key, I'm rambling guys, I'm rambling. Number one key to muddy water is scent. You know, they got to be able to find the bait. So you want something that sticks out in dirty water. Crap Man Green, 100% sticks out in dirty water because it's almost like neon in that water. Uh, we, we, I mean, it's a, it's a super fluorescent bait, like, any time of year. So that and a shad type scent. Uh, just really any scent that will attract the fish to you. Once you find the fish, you find the depth of the fish on the depth finder, which I'll explain all of this in the video. So if you want to skip ahead to when I'm fishing, go ahead. But it. Scent and color, guys. Scent and color. And keeping your hook wet. But I'm going to play the video. If you haven't already, there's 75% of you that haven't subscribed. It takes literally one second of your time to go below this video and click the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me and my family. And if you could hit the thumbs up for me because that'll push this video to other people in the world. And let me learn them how to catch, catch a crappy. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
and happy new years and i will see y'all after i get done testing these new baits out so here's the deal we've got extremely muddy water it's almost milk over here in the river and these fish just aren't cooperating catching fish i got three in the boat now one nice one they're pulling water so my jig isn't wanting to stay where i wanted to but i can go to a heavier jig or you just use the current to your advantage so i'm going to throw up the current and let it fall down and when it gets to where i believe the fish are it should be where i want it now these fish i'm fishing 22 foot of water on this dock and the fish are anywhere between 13 and 11 foot there's one not a bad one oh yeah nice eater i've been all over the place today it's about let's see what time it is 11 25. nice little eater so we got the current coming in to me muddy water i got shad scent on my jig which i'll i mean you just got to play it by what you feel when you should spray it back on there this right here is what the depth finder looks like guys i'm gonna get down here show y'all all of it see that 16 to 11 foot right there so i'm targeting about 10 foot because like i said a crappy feeds up so you've got to have that jig and a strike zone if you get in the school and catch one you can run the school out sometimes very easily run the school out so you want to have that jig above the school so a crappie will come up and eat it but the trick with muddy water is i've only got probably a foot visibility on my jig so with the scent they come up for the scent not really the jig so let's we'll see if we can get some more i mean there's a lot of fish down there it's just getting them to bite in this muddy water it's definitely possible don't ever be scared to try muddy water if you know there's some fish there it just takes time and patience to sit here and you i mean you've got to you've got to keep your jig wet for a lot longer than you normally would <clears throat> i mean one cast could last three to five minutes before you get a bite or you reel in and try again but normally i mean if i cast up there it's going to come to the same spot as this would i throw out again so what's the point in throwing out again but I always try different depth ranges like right now i can drop it down another foot see if they're biting a little bit deeper than what i threw and like i said in the beginner course i'm trying to repeat the same cast i'm trying to get in the same strike zone just trying to give me the best opportunity to catch one even though the boats are rocking me <laughs> but we picked a couple off off a few docks that i you know i normally don't fish a lot a lot of my other docks are getting fished to death right now but i've said before i'm not gonna hide where i fish you know i want other people to catch them too and me having to find other places is actually fun to me this right here is probably a good one. Oh yeah freaking donkey right there guys come here buddy So you can't catch slabs in muddy water. We're gonna give him a hee honk, hee honk. <laughs> Freaking choke that crappy man, jig. Oh, he didn't bite it at all. Probably a good 12 inch right there. Oh. But I had a camera on because I was trying to check the depths of where they want to bite. That one actually bit. 
well, a lot shallower than the other two. So just got to keep trying new depths, figure out which one gets the most bites. So that one bit probably five, six foot. So I sprayed the shad spray like two casts before that one. Caught that one, I just rubbed it back in the shad spray. See if that helps a little bit. I mean, all the shad spray does is just give it something for them to look for in the water. I mean, any, any kind of spray would probably work. I just enjoy the, I use a rooster tail. I got it on clearance at Walmart and it's been working good. But let's see if we can get a couple more like that. That makes two big ones we done got. It's just a slow, slow process when the water is muddy. Because the, the fish has got to find the jig with the scent, get it in his peripherals, and then he's got to want to eat it. So you got a lot of things going on to make a fish eat. 